Good afternoon. I'm here today at the Robert Schumann Center at the European University Institute with two of our research fellows, Hamza Medeb and George Fahmi, who've been organizing a conference on comparing the two political Islam parties, El Nahda and uh, the, Muslim, the Muslim Brotherhood. Um, both parties, Nahda and Muslim Brothers, have been um, the most important political party of political Islam in the region since the revolutions and have reached their climax in 1916. Yet, in 1916, during a congress in Tunis, near Tunis, El Nahda has taken a post-Islamist turn. What does it mean exactly, Hamza? Well, Nahda, they announced during this Congress uh, last year in 2016 that um, they reached the end of political Islam in Tunisia and actually a new phase uh, has started which is the, the era of uh, Muslim democracy. So this move from the classical political Islam to Muslim democracy is uh, perceived um, and announced by Nahda that uh, most probably the party is becoming uh, not Muslim Brotherhood affiliated or among Muslim Brotherhood affiliated parties and is now uh, transforming into a conservative party. The problem is still that um, this project, this Muslim democracy is not clear. The content in terms of content, in terms of values, ideas, it's really uh, an ongoing project under elaboration or should be elaborated and, uh, and not still clear so far. And it, was it, is it politically successful as a turn? It's, it's political, politically successful in terms that Nahda uh, now uh, succeeded uh, not to be alienated or marginalized in the uh, Tunisian uh, political sphere. They uh, entered into a coalition with the secularist party in Ita Tunis. Uh, the party is now um, presenting uh, itself as really uh, uh, modernist. Uh, so in terms of politics, this is an important shift. They also, uh, Nahda uh, leaders, announced that uh, the contentious political Islam is over and that uh, the, the big challenge for the party today is to be a party of government and to govern the country. This is the task, the new phase that, the, uh, that has open, opened after 2011, of course, but mainly after the uh, phase of the, the Congress of 2016. So, uh, George, in Egypt, with the Muslim Brothers, Things have been completely different. What happened? Yeah, the situation in Egypt is completely different than the one in Tunisia. Since the end of the Rabah sit-in, the Muslim Brotherhood uh, has been facing a dispute over the leadership between two groups. The first represent the leadership that was in charge up until 2013, up until Rabah. The second represent a new group uh, that took the leadership after Rabah, uh, among those who were in Egypt, who were uh, operating in Egypt, in 2014, they formed a committee to run the Muslim Brotherhood since the old leadership, most of them were either in prison or uh, outside the country. So since 2014, there, was, uh, there has been a clear dispute between the old leadership, which claims that it's still the legitimate leader, uh, leadership of the Muslim Brotherhood and reject the claims of the new, uh, the new one. Uh, while on the other hand, the new one claims that the old leadership is responsible for what happened to the Muslim Brotherhood and now they have to accept uh, change in leadership. Do you see the same uh, generation uh, dispute, the generation gap in Tunisia, in the party? Uh, of course, there is a generation gap, clearly a generation gap in, in, in Tunisia or among another people. As you know, before 2011, the constituency, the grassroots of the, the party was divided between exile, prison, and uh, underground activism. So um, there is also different generations uh, not able uh, to develop a clear uh, and uh, vision of the future. 
uh, of the country and of the future of the rule or the role that the, the Nahda will play in the future of the country. Uh, of course, also that the transformation of Nahda into a conservative party, even if it's still, I mean, not clear this project is uh, to also will imply to trans to 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 open up the the uh, the party to a new new uh, activists to new or high profile uh, uh, people and of course this will also uh, uh, imply or has as a, conse a consequence of marginalizing other old militants or generations etc the other thing is that this transformation this ongoing transformation as I said, as there is no clear and coherent vision about the future, is also um, disputed. I mean, in terms of there is a risk also that um, division will divisions will appear and they exist, but that will be exacerbated in the future. Okay. The fact to be a governing party. Uh, the way to deal with the state, the way to deal with the uh, old regime and the former regime, the Ben Ali's regime, the way to uh, the relations to have with the business, with the labor union, etc. It will imply a high level of pragmatism, of flexibility, of resilience, which which Nahda showed during the previous years. But now the big challenge really is how to transform the party from a party, an important party, to maybe a major player in the political sphere, able to uh, govern in the in the near future, and this will, of course, create a kind of tensions within the party, in, as the ideology is not really clear uh, so far. But George, and this is my last question: in Egypt, the situation is much bleaker for the Muslim Brothers. How is the situation in, in the political sphere? Are there still legitimacy? Is are there still is it still an important political party after the crackdown? I think now the situation, the real danger now, uh, if you look at the Muslim Brotherhood, is that this dispute over leadership has left many young members uh, f um, feeling confused, alienated. They uh, which might lead them to turn into violence or to join uh, jihadi groups. We've been th uh, we saw some of. Uh, some of these uh, Muslim Brotherhood members joining jihadi groups, but until now, it's a minority. However, uh, the risk is that this, this minority might, uh, these numbers might increase in the future, uh, given the fact that there's a dispute over the leadership, the fact that there's no coherent strategy. So that leave many of the youth, uh, Muslim Brotherhood youth, without hope. I'm sorry to close on a very bleak uh, uh, explanation. I thank you a lot, both of you for your in-depth analysis. Thank you very much. Thanks, Catherine.